happening. Turn with me, if you don't mind, to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. And the word of God says, The words of Jeremiah, the son of Elakiah, of the priests, who were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. In the thirteenth year of his reign, it came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. May God bless his holy word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our sermon today is titled, God's Call and the Commissioning of Our Lives. God's Call and the Commissioning of Our Lives. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, God has called us to serve and worship him in truth and in spirit. He has created us and made us who we are as human beings for his glory, for his plan and the purpose in our lives. Each of us means so much to our Father God, the creator of all. And just like prophet Jeremiah, God knew us before we were even born. And ladies and gentlemen, we live at a time where challenges are rolling like thunder every day. Friends, making some observations in these three verses, God wants us really to know who prophet Jeremiah is. This reverses God so much that we need to know as we walk through this series. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Elkiah, of the priests, who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. My friends, who is really prophet Jeremiah? Let's meet this servant of God this morning, my friends. As the scripture has described this man, Jeremiah was born in 646 BC in the priestly city of Anathoth, in the territory of Benjamin, son of Elkiah. And my friends, as the scripture has confirmed to us, God knew this man before he was even conceived. God is our all knowing, powerful. God. He knows everything before it happens. He sees things afar off, my friends. We as human beings are limited in understanding and doing things, but God the Greater is an unlimited God. He sees things afar off. He does things according to his plan and purpose. My friends, in Jeremiah's day, he was unquestionably the greatest spiritual person in Israel. He was considered one of the greatest spiritual people in Israel. He stood for the authority of God. He believed in the God of great commission. And ladies and gentlemen, when the people were being sidetracked by the false teachers, Jeremiah warned them. He told them. Don't look aside. Don't look back. Keep 
your eyes on the living God of our fathers, Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And my friends, as the, as the prophet of God, the mouthpiece of God, he warned the people of God. He told them, look, you better watch out. Something is happening. The devil is creeping in. He's misleading you. Stand for the living God. My friends, as this unquestionable greatest spiritual leader in Israel stood for the word of God, there was a multitude of his countrymen who despised and persecuted him. They did not listen to him. His fellow countrymen and women despised him. They did not listen to what he had warned them. Instead of listening and following his spiritual leadership, they undermined the authority of God and they persecuted the men of God. They disrespected the servant of God. In other words, my friends, they called him names. They mocked what he was saying. They undermined the voice of God. This bold servant of God created so many enemies because of his faith in the living God. A prophet in Jeremiah, my friends, did not give up. The servant of God kept his head up. And he continued to warn his countrymen and women, look, the devil has crept in. Now is the time to turn our hearts to the living God of our fathers. But ladies and gentlemen, persecution continued. The despising of what he was saying continued. But the servant of God was not giving up. Ladies and gentlemen, we live at a time Similar to Jeremiah's time. The devil has crept in, my friends. Sin has paralyzed our minds and our hearts. We are no longer listening to the authority of God. We are listening to the misleading of the devil and the false teachers that have risen in the 21st century. And ladies and gentlemen, as Jeremiah warned the people of God... So these words that we are reading today and every day as Christians, these words of God are warning us to turn our hearts to our living God. And my friends, we may think of things that are happening, are happening because of anything else. But the first, sin is toxic. Sin is poisonous, my friends. When hearts are filled with the sin, hearts are filled with hate, hypocrisy, arrogancy, all kind of toxic attitudes. My friends, we see, we see the paralyzation of the God's people. And that's what Jeremiah is telling his countrymen and women. Turn your hearts to God. When God speaks to his people, my friends, his words are, are final. We live our lives the way we want. It's our right, my friends. But God has designed for us how to live our lives. Following his teachings, the authority of the Bible. My friends, as the servant of God continued, the multitude of people continued to dis disrespect him, to disrespect to the word of God, to hate the man of God. So, Jeremiah and God is so much stressed up. He became a heart-broken prophet with a, with a heart-broken message to his people. His heart was broken for seeing his fellow countrymen despising and persecuting him and despising the word of God rejecting the message of God, undermining the authority of God, but yet they decided to do whatever they wanted to do in their lives. The servant of God was heartbroken. He brought her heartbroken message. When you study the book of uh, Jeremiah, 
He wrote the book, my friends, as the Holy Spirit of God led him. It is a very, chronologically, you cannot even arrange this book. And you know, my friends, throughout his sermons and the miracles that God was faithfully performing through him, Prophet Jeremiah declared to the people, unless you surrender to God's will, there is no way of escaping calamity in your lives. Unless you surrender. God is telling us, unless we surrender our pride, unless we surrender our hate, unless we surrender our arrogance, my friends, how can we escape calamity in the 21st century? God wants us to be faithful servants of himself. He wants us to be faithful, great commissioned Christians. What we see happening is similar to what was happening during Jeremiah's time. And my friends, a servant of God took the pain for God's sake. They called him names. And my friends, he never gave up. He continued. We need many of Jeremiah's today, my friends, that will not give up even when we are called in names, my friends. Stand for God. Stand for the truth. And let the people know hate is sin, my friends. Stand for the authority of God and tell people arrogance is sin, my friends. Stand bold as a Christian, men and women, boys and girls, and say that, my friends, all this kind of chaos we see are sinful. And God is calling us to surrender. Every one of us to surrender. And that will help us to escape the calamity in our lives. Jeremiah was not afraid to, to preach the truth, my friends. And neither am I. And many others who believe what God says. You know what, my friends? If I stand here and tell you all the good things that you wanted to hear. It's a good thing. But is it really what God wants me to tell you? We got to go by what God wants us to hear. God speaks in his word very tough words for us to hear. So that he can correct our hearts. He can correct our behavior. He can help us to know how things need to be done. His way, not our way. We all created equal in the image of God. And God wants us someday to be in heaven. Jeremiah stood for the authority of God. And for 40 years, four decades, the servant of God dealt with hard-hearted people. The Bible calls them stiff-necked people. Jeremiah dealt with the very stiff-necked people. Who could not listen to God? Who could not listen to him? Who could do whatever they wanted to do in their own lives? My friends, I think we can say today, we meet this description here. We have become stiff-necked people. We don't want to listen to God. We only want to listen to what we want. But my friends, how are we going to escape calamity? How are we going to escape it, my friends? These are truthful things. Jeremiah's heart, for 40 years, 40 years, pleading with his fellow countrymen. How many pastors are standing on the pulpit today in America? I know and I understand not all of them stand for the word of God, I tell you that. But I can tell you that there are many pastors today standing on the pulpits in the local church in the United States who are preaching the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God is speaking through his men that they want each and every one of us to examine our hearts. Jeremiah did it for 40 years. But he dealt with these hard-hearted people. His heart was filled with the tears of compassion for his fellow countrymen. His heart was filled with the compassion. He was filled with the compassion of his fellow countrymen. He felt to see, he, he was so sad to see them rejecting the living God of their fathers. 
doing the things that they wanted to, to do, but in disobeyed their God. But yet, they wanted their lives to be better. How can their lives be better? When they have rejected their living God, their creator, their father. This applies to us, my friends. How can our lives be better when we have rejected the one who has created us? Who loves us very much? Who gave his son, Jesus Christ, to be crucified on the cross for our sins? How can we escape the calamity of our disobedience toward our God? My friends, I love you all to death and I own God's people. God wants us to love all his people. And God wants us to be honest, truthful. We must Worship him in truth and in spirit. God's call and the commissioning of our lives. We are Christians. Bible-believing, born-again people in the 21st century. We must condemn sin. We must condemn hate. We must condemn arrogance, my friends. We must condemn racism, my friends. Because that is sin. That is sin, my friends. And that case, my friends, God will hear the cry of his people. We will be able to escape calamity as individuals, as the families, and as a nation. As the church goes, so goes the nation. If the church is a wimpy church, the nation will be more wimpier than the church. God wants Christians to stand firm, my friends. You know, I was born in Kenya. I was nicknamed Pastor Nyavu. I love people. I respect people. I love lost people. I share the good news. But there is one thing that I made a decision when I gave my life to Christ Jesus. That's where my name came from. I was preaching. I had a preaching ministry in the radio. I spoke the word of God truthfully without condemning anyone, but with grace, love, and honesty. What is needed today in America is humility, my friends, repentance, and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to lead us to know how to get along, to work together, to set a good example as Christians, because God's call and the commissioning of our lives is very important to God. He has called us, my friends. We cannot, we cannot pretend to love his people, but yet we don't want them to exist. You know, <laughs> and... All of us, Christians, my friends, all of us, our hearts should be filled with the tears of compassion for our fellow countrymen and women. Sure enough. And I hope all of us as Christians we are experiencing that. I'm hoping that our hearts are filled with the, with the tears of compassion for our fellow countrymen and women. Prophet Jeremiah, by birth, he was a priest. Prophet Jeremiah, by grace, he was a prophet. Prophet Jeremiah, by the trials of his life, he was a bold servant of God who spoke the truth. And God has helped us to know that. God has described in his word for who we are. Because we as individual people have given our lives to Christ Jesus. We signed the covenant with him. We should be the ones, my friends, to stand firm and they say that we are the 21st century priests. And by grace in the 21st century, we are prophets of God. We got to speak on his behalf here on earth today. And by the trials of life that we are experiencing here on earth, we should be bold servants.
ignorance of God's truth. And this is the truth. My opinion you don't count when it comes to the word of God. Yours don't count either when it comes to the word of God. God's word is the breath of God. Neotheistas in Greek. The breath of God. This word is inspired by God himself. And God wants all of us to listen to his word. He wants us to be faithful people listening to his word. Teaching his word truthfully. Without a compromise or manipulating it. My friends, Jeremiah's ministry was carried on in a politically, socially, morally, and a spiritually chaotic era. Did you hear what I just said? There was so much going on politically. And during Jeremiah's ministry, it was carried on during a time of politically, socially, morally, and spiritually chaotic time. Chaotic era. Remember? My friends, there are times like that in the world we live in. Yes. I wrote a book last year sometimes. Understanding Christianity in the new political era. Our fake evangelical confused the gospel. My friends, this word of God is the truth of God. He warned us as Christians from the youngest to the oldest to stand for this truth. This is what God wants us to do. And for us to solve the, the, the hearty problem, we must deal with that hearty problem with the word of God. When his sin is in the heart, my friends, it paralyzes people. It brings chaos. And my friends, unless we deal with that part, we will continue roaming around all over the place. We will run all over America like Forrest Gump. I'm not promoting him. Because God is calling us to be, to be bold servants. Here in Jeremiah, and despite the rejection of God's message by the people, Jeremiah still loved his countrymen and women. He prayed for them and agonized over his people. This man of God his heart was filled with the tears of compassion toward his people. This is us, my friends. When we see what is happening in our country as Christians, we should not be the ones inciting. We should be the ones helping to lead by example. Calm the storm, my friends. Action speaks louder than words. God wants us to be on the steering wheel, leading. As the church goes, so goes the nation. Oh, Pastor Nicholas, don't say that. I will say it, my friends. I got to say it. Prophet Jeremiah said it, my friends. But we say it so that you can make the decision. Others, everybody will make a decision, personal decision. No pastor can push anyone to, to not, who don't want to make a decision to make a decision. You make your own personal decision. The way you want to serve God, the way you want to worship God, the, one to, the way you want to do things. It's up to you. We are Americans, man. We love our freedoms. Yeah, we do. No one wants to take your freedom away. But God wants us to stand for the truth. Verse 4, as we finish. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Here is prophet Jeremiah conversing with his word, his mouth, my friends. Verse 4, he's saying this. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, the man of God heard the voice of God. This verse is the heart of the prophetic experience of the servant of God. This is it here. He listened to the word of God. He did not listen to his own opinions. He did not listen to the opinions of others, my friends. He listened to the word of God. Did you hear that? Then the word of the Lord came to me saying. You know, this is it here, my friends. It is the word of God that directs us to love others. It is the word of God that directs us to interact peacefully with others. It is the word of God that leads us 
to have good fellowship with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and the fellow citizens. It is the word of God, my friends, that it teaches us how to get along. We can't blame anyone. Each one of us, instead of blaming some others, we got to blame ourselves. We got to play a role in creating an environment where there is love, peace, unity, humility, reconciliation. We individually, every individual person must swallow our pride. Jeremiah's ministry call came not, not in a vision, but by hearing the divine word of God. That is us. God's call and the commissioning of our lives. We are Christians. The reason we made a decision to give our lives to Christ, we listened to the word of God. God's word convicted you and I and repented our sins before Christ Jesus. We are accountable before him, my friends. The decisions that we make here on earth they got to be the good decisions that will help us to escape calamity. The God of love is also God of just, my friends. He's unjust God. Verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. The servant of God continues. God spoke to his servant from his breath, from his word, my friends, to his heart. God's word spoke to Jeremiah all the way to his heart, my friends. This is us. When we study the word of God, God speaks to us from him to our hearts. When you take it with your mind, it doesn't work. You got to have it to receive it in your heart. The heart, the word of God leads your heart to make a decision, send the message to the mind, and they know how to get along with others. Worship in truth and in spirit. My prayer is that in all of us as Christians all over this nation will listen to the voice of God speaking from his breath to our hearts. And when that is done, when we accept that, my friends, that word, that message, we will be leading our nation back to God. And the chaos that you see in the streets, my friends, it will all be nowhere to be found. We will all be in our homes. We will live in peace. We will have wonderful times together because each individual person will recognize fellow citizen. We will love and pray for our fellow countrymen and women. But this arrogancy, this pride that has taken over, this superiority that has taken over, my friends, God is watching and saying, what has happened with my soul, my, my people that claim to be born again? Person, don't say that. My friends, without inspiration by God, words are meaningless. Without inspiration by God, this word is meaningless. But this word is inspired by God. It is near the esters, the breath of God. So it is inspirational. It is meaningful. It is tense for what it says, my friends. And God is asking us to accept it, to respond to it, each individually. God tells Jeremiah, way before I formed you in your mom's womb, I knew you in a sense of a relationship with you. Yes, way before. <laughs> He tells Jeremiah, way before I formed you in your mom's womb, I knew you in a sense of a relationship with you. This is wonderful, my friends. God knew us before we were conceived, before we were formed into our parents' wombs. My mama used to, do, to tell me, bless our heart, when I, 
when I do something, she will say, Mainge, you know to know that I had you in my womb for, for, 12, for 12 months like an elephant. 12 months in the womb. Biology says that baby should be in the womb for nine months. My mama claimed she had me in her womb for 12 months. So my mom, she would tell me, thank God I spoke with her yesterday. Well, you know, they will say this. My mom will, say, will tell me, if you do something that I'm telling you not to do, and you do it, you know that I had you in my womb for 12 months. So I'll get you. That's why she got me on that switch, that leather belt. You know what, my friends? Our God, our Father, our Creator, He knew us before we were, He formed us in our mom's wombs. He knew you and I in a sense of a relationship with you. He knew that there will come a time that you will open your heart for him, give your life to Jesus Christ, and become his servant. We are the mouthpieces of God in the 21st century. We are needed, my friends, to bring good spiritual change in America. Christians, we are needed. We are missing in action. M-I-A, missing in action. It is time for Christians to step up and lead the nation back to God. Sin has crippled our hearts. We may claim politicians have done, but I tell you what, my friends, before it got to the politicians, it got into our hearts. And that is called sin. S-I-N. Turn with me to Psalm 139, please. Psalm 139 as we finish. Psalm 139 Verse 13 to 16. Listen to this, my friends. <laughs> you know how all knowing God. Psalm 139, verse 13 to 16 says, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, being yet uninformed, and in your book they all were written, the days versioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. My friends, God himself, yes, he formed us in our parents' wombs. And here in Psalm 139, verse 13 to 16, my friend, the psalmist says, you know what, David? I, I love you, God. I want to do your will in my life. I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. That my soul knows very well. That you are the living God of our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is us. So my friends, God is telling us to step up. God is telling us to open our hearts and follow his leadership. So God tells me, Jeremiah, look, my servant, before you were born, I sanctified you. Yes, I sanctified you. I appointed you. I sent you before you were born. I sanctified you. I ordained you. I set you apart for a divinate spiritual purpose. I did not call you um, to go... Flip hamburgers and cucumbers and stuff like that. God has called us to proclaim the message. He has called us. All the other things are miscellaneous. Hamburgers and chicken, chicken and whatever else things you do. Those are miscellaneous stuff. But God has called us as Christians. He has called us to share the good news. That's our calling. God's call and the commissioning of our lives. We are Christians. God had sanctified these men and women. I set you apart for a definite spiritual purpose. That is the first priority that I have called you to be. 
before you go into those other things or do other things. I have appointed you a prophet for a global cross-cultural ministry. God has called Jeremiah. He has called us. He has appointed us as prophets for a global cross-cultural ministry. All people need Jesus. Every individual person on earth needs Jesus. People are dying in sin. They need salvation to be in heaven someday with Jesus. But the question is, are we willing to give people Jesus? Are we willing to give people Jesus? Rick Warren in his book, Purpose Driven Life, he says, and I quote, Where in the world, why in the world are we here for? Why? Rick asked that question. Why are we here for? Just to occupy space? Well, we are here for more weak and good spiritual things than just occupying the space. God wants us to lead people to heaven. He wants us to pray for those who are struggling. He wants us to heal, the, to, 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 to encourage those who are suffering, to know that they're going to be all right. There is hope in Christ Jesus. There is hope. There is healing. There is love in Christ. There is some bright future and hope in Christ in heaven. There is great things in our lives, my friends. Let God use you and I to proclaim his message. God's call and the commissioning of our lives. Let us have compassion for his people. Let, us, let our hearts be filled with the tears of compassion. And work so hard to pray for our nation. To reconcile our nation. To help our people, all of us, as one people, one America, one Americans, one Christians, because we are a family, my friends. Let us not allow the devil to continue dancing around all over the place. God loves us. He cares for us. He has called us during these challenging times not to run away, but to stand firm and bold in his word and lead the nation back to God. Lead our fellow citizens back to the living God. This is the moment of truth, my friends. Time for salvation is now. Tomorrow never comes. I don't know what is here.